Hello again. So you saw the title in maybe my community posts. Why am I going to talk to you about being fat even though I've never gone through that myself? And I think I'm unexperienced to do that. And you're mostly right. I This is mostly a video that's going to be like a couple simple steps to start the stepping stones on be having a healthier diet overall more than just not becoming fat but fat is going to be what's used because it's a technical term when I say fat here I don't mean like you're obese you weigh 200 pounds over 200 pounds at a below average weight or something like that what I mean here is that you if you have health problems because relating to your fat, then chances are you have visceral fat. I'm going to get into all that in a second, but really quickly, I want to go over a little bit of something that I don't know if you might have already noticed in the video. I don't think I'll have put any in yet, but I'm going to do some very minimal editing this time around rather than just stipping, stitching two completely unedited videos together and just being like yep it's it so that the videos run time it gets cut down just a little bit like probably from an hour to maybe like 50 45 minutes and just to make the video a bit more appealing for a new audience for anything like that so just there might be some minimal editing like around times where I'll stutter for like six whole seconds but other than that it'll remain mostly the same what am I talking about here what I mean with visceral fat we're gonna go over the two key differences of visceral fat and like just normal fat I'm going to recommend you a video it's called fat chance I think it's called I think it's called Fat Chance Fructose 2.0 or something like that. It's basically like an hour presentation that by given by this one doctor, this one really good doctor 10 years ago. And he's basically going over, okay, so fat is a problem, obesity is a massive problem, but that itself is not the problem. It's not those people's problem. It's not an obese person's problem that they're having all these health effects related to obesity because it can happen to skinny people too. You can you can be as skinny as me. I guess as skinny as I was a while ago. I'm not as skinny anymore. But like you can be as skinny as I was a few months ago and still have visceral fat that causes you heart failure. But how does that work? You might be asking. Well, I recommend you go and watch that video. Either put it in your watch later now, or go watch it right now instead of this video. And then come back to this video. But he basically goes over... Why are people fat nowadays? And what can we do to stop being so? And I'm going to basically kind of walk you through that and simplify it down to a less scientific level. So, basically, people people are fat because they're eating more, right? People are fat because they're eating more. I think in the video itself, men are eating, uh, like, two, 170 to 200 calories more a day. And then women are eating like 300 more calories a day than they used to a few generations ago. But why is that? It was either a few generations ago or 25 years ago. But either way, not that long ago, people used to eat less. But why? Well, the problem here isn't the fact that they're... You can eat more food. You've always, 
for the past hundred years, we've had the Industrial Revolution and the ability to consume fast food. Fast food's been around for a hundred, about a hundred fifty years almost. That's probably a little inaccurate, but it's been around for a lot longer than the obesity ep epidemic itself has. So, why is it starting to cause such huge problems now? And why sp in specific countries like those that have the fast food franchises and uh, all that, and then like certain other countries, it's on the decline. I can give a couple of reasons for this. Sugar and very high processing. You may have realized that a McDonald's and other any any other fast food like that, it contains a lot of calories that do not fill you up. Like, it, most of us watching this video here could probably eat half a pizza and still have room for more. Even though that half a pizza should be already half the day's worth, you can probably consume that pizza within, like, an hour. So, why? The main problem is that the video, again, goes over this, but we have three hormones that control our hunger and all that in some sort of way you've got insulin which tells your body to store fat to store energy you've got uh, ghrelin I think ghrelin that tells you you're hungry stop using energy and go find some food and you've got lectin which tells you you have plenty of energy stop eating food and go burn some of that energy doing something these are the three main things, and insulin and lectin are pretty neatly stored together because, like, insulin tells you that you have excess energy, so it also tell lectin that, you know, you have excess energy, so you should go burn it. But the problem with the current food system is that there's a lot of sugar in it, and sugar blocks insulin and lectin from actually from your brain actually reading that and being like oh that's the case so you can eat like 500 600 calories all the way up to maybe thousands of calories of high processed garbage and that'll and you'll still think you're hungry when the truth is you aren't that hungry it's just you think you are because this stuff keeps blocking this hormone that needs to get to your brain and when it doesn't get to your brain your brain assumes that it's still hungry because it hasn't seen a lectin, a lectin sim, uh, signal yet so it's like okay we need more food go get more food which is probably why most people that which is the reason why people that eat a lot of fast food always feel so lethargic and so tired because their body and mind still think that they're hungry. So they still think that they don't have enough food. There were countless studies put into this case in the, uh, in the Fat Chance video. But the main one that I remember is that there was a study done between a normal a normal weight rat and an obese rat and the obese rat even though he has obviously way more energy stored up and he has a lot more that he can burn he would do almost no physical exercise he would just sit there and lie around the entire time unless they put food in front of him and then he'd go and he'd you know, like wiggle over to that food like barely because you know you can picture what an obese rat would how terrible their movement would be. So he'd like waddle over there, he'd consume the food, and then he'd just sit there again. Well, the tie between these two rats is that the normal rat has normal lectin si the signals, and he's actually able to read his lectin. 
The other rat didn't. The obese rat could not, his brain could not process the fact that he was full, so he always thought he was hungry, so he ate way more than he needed to, and way, way more than he should have. So, now you can basically tie that to how humans work. If, it, if their lectin gets blocked, then they'll think they're more hungry, and they'll eat more than they need to, and so they'll be at a calorie surplus, and they'll get fatter. So, again, what's causing this? Sugar. Sugar blocks insulin, which also blocks lectin. A lot of sugar in your diet can easily just make you hungry all the time. Because it tastes really good, and it makes you think that you're always hungry. So, it completely crushes your will to not eat more of it. The reason why this is, is because it, sugar also has something that's very necessary for human life. It has two main things. Most sugar has two main things in it. It's glucose, ugh, glucose and fructose. Glucose, you probably heard of in your middle school, high school biology class. This is necessary for all life on Earth, and it is so important that if an organism doesn't get enough of it, its body or its any anything else will start making it for it. It's that important. Fructose is garbage. You don't want this. Fructose in a high enough doses can actually cause symptoms in the liver that are very similar to alcohol. Like... It, I, you should really go watch the Fat Chance video to understand more, but like it, glucose makes glycogen, glucose makes glycogen, which in turn makes you actually have energy, and then you get a little bit of like this and that, and you know, it produces other stuff, because every process does, but the main thing is glycogen, and glycogen is good for your liver. And for you. Alcohol and the process behind fructose do not do that. Your body doesn't have any use for fructose, so it just throws it into your liver and says, here, digest this so we can throw it out later. And it causes a lot of problems in there. Again, I could be more scientific with this, but I haven't done enough research to really fully comprehend the whole process. But it's basically that most of your glucose is used for other things. Alcohol, is some of it, a little bit of it can be used for other things, but most of it goes to the liver. And with fructose, all of it goes to the liver. Every last drop of fructose that continues along your intestinal, your digestive system, it'll all go to your liver. Which is why sugar is so bad. It's because you can't use fructose for anything. Fructose has no function in the body whatsoever that we can find. Because all of it just goes to the liver and then it just gets turned to waste anyway. Which is why natural sugar isn't as bad. Of course, it's not good. But it's still not as bad. So... That's, that's that simple then, right? Just remove sugar and you'll no longer be obese. Kinda. There can be other problems with it, especially if you have an actual eating disorder. But the main thing is to eliminate sugar and try and eat foods that have the least amount of processing possible. Processing also has a few other problems. But the main thing is also sugar because they'll coat it in they'll coat some things in sugar to give it a nice browning effect and so many other things as well. And there's also uh I think Fat Chance said there was fifty six names for sugar that it could put into its ingredients list without ever telling you that there's sugar in there. The main one being like evaporated cane juice. 
And what do you get when you evaporate cane juice? You get sugar. So you need to be wary of your sugar intake and you need to be wary of the ingredients list on the feet on the foods that you're eating uh, the main thing that I have found to be the best way to avoid excessive bad food is to look at how many ingredients it has if you know steak or eggs or chicken they all have one ingredient and it's themselves which is why these things are so healthy for us. It's the same with most fruits and most vegetables, as well as almost all nuts, like almonds, peanut butter, peanut butter, almonds, peanuts, cashews, that kind of stuff. These are all foods that are like, they have one ingredient, and that ingredient is themselves. But if you go onto McDonald's or something and you look at the ingredients lists for even some of their healthier options, they have an ingredients list that's like three Harry Potter novels along. And you're like, well, why does it need all this extra stuff? Food has always been so simple for the past hundreds of thousands of years. Millions of years that humans and humanoid creatures have existed. Like Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, for most of, if not all of their existence, they ate what they found in the wild, and that sustained them perfectly fine. Why does it need... Why does my burger need to have freaking bread on it? Why does my... Why does my meat need, why does my meat need to have barbecue sauce on it? It's just for the taste, right? Well, most barbecue sauce also has either some form of sugar or high fructose corn syrup. Fructose, yet again, high fructose corn syrup, very unhealthy. You should know that by now, just based off the fact that it has high fructose in the name. It's very awful. High levels of fructose. A lot of leptin gets blocked. So, that is kind of the basics on this, this whole dieting thing, is you avoid sugar, and you avoid, you know, anything that could possibly block your leptin. You avoid fast food, because fast food also adds sugar into most of their stuff that they don't really need sugar for. Like, I'm sure if I checked it, a McDonald's burger would have, like, five or six grams of sugar for seemingly no reason. But now you know the reason, because sugar is very highly addictive. And that you need to try and eat stuff that has, like, one to five ingredients in it. If it has sugar in it, can it. If it has artificial sweeteners in it, Try to limit your intake on it. If it has high fructose corn syrup, stay the hell away from it. Get away from it as far as you can. Because high fructose corn syrup is just awful. I stopped eating barbecue sauce as of yesterday because of how terrible my steak made me feel. Like steak is supposed to be really healthy, but my the barbecue sauce in it is so sweet it still made me hungry afterwards which luckily I was doing uh, intermittent fasting and it was the first thing I ate well it was the second thing I ate but it was pretty close to the first thing I ate so it didn't get you know it didn't affect my leptin as much as it could have but the main thing is to stay away from sugar and I'm also going to go ahead and dismantle a lot of lies you've probably been told by the whole food system cholesterol sodium fat except for trans fat as well as uh, pretty much everything outside of sugar trans fat and a large amount of calories all those things are good. Cholesterol is really good for you. 
it actually helps you more than it harms you. You really shouldn't be that concerned about you having a high cholesterol diet. Because healthy people have a high cholesterol diet. If, like you'll see on your box of Cheerios or something, it says low cholesterol to help promote uh, heart health or something along those lines. This is wrong. I don't know why they put these kind of things on there. I guess it's just to make the like the average Joe happy because most people that you're going to meet are probably still going to think that sodium and cholesterol are bad, which these two things are very good for you. It's kind of like with with the situation with cholesterol it's kind of like you have a ton of fire, so you take out the firefighters. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Why take out the thing that's trying to help you when you could take out the thing that's actually hurting you and causing those fires to begin with? You don't want to take out the firefighters. Cholesterol is helping you fight heart disease. Cholesterol is helping you with that. It's just that it's related to it, so people thought it was causing it. Correlation does not equal causation. Just because a bad heart means that you need more cholesterol, that you tend to have more cholesterol, does not mean that you have bad heart because of higher cholesterol. Your body is probably making more cholesterol on its own, so you probably think you don't need to consume as much. But high cholesterol can still help your heart a lot. I thought Cheerios were healthy for quite a long time. Probably longer than I'd like to think. Especially now knowing all these things. Like Cheerios have very little outside of grains. And even then grains aren't that good. They're not super necessary. At least... I don't know if they're actually unhealthy or not, but I know that grains are not required. But the key thing is that if your food has any more than five ingredients in it, you don't need it. For a fully optimized diet, you want to have all your food be things that are just one ingredient. You buy eggs, the one ingredient is an, in them is eggs. You buy a steak, the one ingredient that's already in it is steak. Chicken, the same thing. Stuff like chicken nuggets, hamburgers, hot dogs, those kind of things do not count because they have a ton of other stuff put into them. At least most of the time. I think some hamburgers are, some, are kind of okay, but... M Chicken nuggets, like, they're not healthy at all. I get they're made out of chicken, but they have a ton of other stuff. And they're always in such, like, a neat little perfect shape. And it's going to make you a lot pickier of an eater. I'm going to give a kind of example towards that um, from somebody that I know. Basically... He's the kind of guy that, like, eats five things, maybe. Like, and his food has to be perfect. His food has to absolutely be pitch perfect. I don't think he'll be watching this. Because I don't actually... I don't think he knows that I even have this channel. Because I haven't told him. But, like, he's the person where he's a straight-up toddler. He needs... His food to be absolutely perfect. If it's a little bit crispy, give it to someone else. If it has some weird little bit of texture in it that he doesn't like, throw it in the trash. That kind of person, you know? And I can't blame him because food has been made so perfect nowadays. It's so awful. Meat has always been the kind of food where it's, you know... It's mostly red meat here, there's a bit of fat there, there's a bone in the middle, 
it's very imperfect and it has multiple different textures and roughnesses within the same thing. That's how meat is supposed to be. It should be like you keep consuming it, you eat it a lot, and then you get to the fat layer and you're supposed to eat that too. You're not supposed to just eat the parts that feel nice because food isn't supposed to feel nice texture wise. Food is supposed to feel good everything wise. It's supposed to feel good nutritionally and taste. You can eat foods that you like and still be healthy because there's a ton of holy natural stuff out there that doesn't have many ingredients. You don't need to have pop tarts or cereal for breakfast. You can just eat eggs. That's it. You don't need a constant new fast food item and like several different types of slightly different pizza every single time you have lunch or dinner. Just vary, just vary between the types of meat that you're eating. There's steak. There's so many different parts of the cow that are edible. You have chicken, and just within that, there's chicken drumsticks, breasts, um, I forgot what it's called. There's like, there's tenderloins. You can eat lamb, turkey. There is pork, and everything that comes from pigs as well. Bacon I'd recommend not going for. I, maybe, I don't know. I, I haven't checked that. I, I will. Bacon's a maybe. And that's another breakfast item as well. Uh, you don't need to have super sugary sides. You don't need to have like Oreo cookies stacked on top on the side. Your dessert can just be dark chocolate if you really need dessert that badly. If you feel like dessert is so important to your happiness, get dark chocolate. And I mean like real dark chocolate, not Hershey's dark chocolate. I mean like real, comes in a little paper bag dark chocolate. Of course, you might not be able to, you likely won't be able to find that in your area, but that is like the best dark chocolate because it just has nat all the natural stuff in it and they don't have added sugar. They don't have any of the garbage. It's just pure, like the original cocoa just mixed up together and whatever's added is completely necessary to the equation. They don't add stuff to try and addict you to it. They just add stuff that is required to make it become chocolate. For drinks, water. That's it. You don't need to flavor it. You don't need to carbonate it. You don't need any other drinks other than water. You can add milk if you really want. If you're like a heavy milk drinker, a heavy milk drinker, but that's not even that necessary. And milk has always been debated on whether or not it's even good for you. So it's best to just wait until the research comes back and it's like, oh, it's actually really great. Especially now with estrogenics being such a uh, more and more researched topic. Which is another problem with sugar in and of itself. That's uh, another topic for another day though. I'm here to talk about diet. And to close this off, I'm going to go over a small little thing. The few things that you will need to know to have the best diet that you can physically have. You need to try and stay away from sugar, artificial sweeteners, and high fructose corn syrup or anything of that like. Anything that's super sweet is probably bad for you. Probably really bad for you. Like you, uh, good examples like, um, this sparkling water drink that we have, I don't know what it's actually called, but it's like, it's, it's basically soda, except it's not, it doesn't have caffeine, it has no sugar, it has no carbs, it has, f it's five calories per bottle, and these are not like tiny bottles, these are probably like 
one and a half times as big as a normal water bottle. These things are pretty big. So I thought for a little bit that they were, you know, somewhat healthy or at least okay. But then I realized it has sucralose in it. Artificial sweetener. Can it? The other thing you need to do is you need to stay away from anything that you aren't able to read the ingredients list in like 10 20 seconds if it takes you a full minute to read the ingredients list of an item then you need to just not eat that because it's going to have so much stuff in it because that's just all the stuff that they tell you is going to be in it there's probably a there's probably a couple things that they're not telling you about, like that get put into it later on. Uh, a great example of this is that me and my family were at McDonald's a little bit ago because we were buying a family member a soda, and like the allergy warning had like every allergy known to man. This. I'm pretty sure the exact list said we work with foods that contain um, contain wheat, milk, eggs, soy, crop, uh, shellfish, um, nuts, tree nuts, what? every addiction, not addiction, every allergy that exists. If it has more than two allergy warnings in it, Stay away from it. You can also go and watch Hamza's video on this that he made like a couple years back or his more recent video. He'll tell you to go watch his older video through that video anyway. But basically, all you need to know is that you need to stay away from sugar and you need to stay away from fast food. Those are the two main things. Uh... And also basically anything that has more than five ingredients. That is how you fully optimize your diet. And you could also go another step further. You could go the step that I have started carving a path for, which is intermittent fasting. I don't really super need to do intermittent fasting, so I'm not incredibly serious about it yet. But it is really cool fasting is always something i thought of as kind of a little strange and more something that heavily religious people did fasting is very nice um now i can go probably i want to say like 18 20 22 hours without eating anything just drinking water throughout that period and then at the end of that period I'll eat a ton of food and then I'll go back to what I was doing because that is a way healthier way to live I don't have a very big stomach yet so it's not super optimal for me yet cuz like it'll make me feel really sluggish for the next hour afterwards cuz I don't have a very big stomach so eating 2,000 calories in one sitting it just hardly works for me right now. <coughs> but it is what I have been looking for. Like, it, intermittent fasting is the top tier way to live. And I look forward to doing that a lot once my stomach capacity increases a bit. So... That's basically everything. I know that this video being shorter will probably make it seem like I think diet's a lot simpler than most things in life. Diet is very complex and you do need to do several years of self-research and evaluation to figure out what works good for you and what doesn't. Because... Like, it, no, no diet is going to actually show what its long-term effects are until you're months into it. So, a diet that would normally... A diet that you might follow through with a month or maybe even a few weeks just to try it out 
you're never going to know what that actually would make your life look like unless you were in it for a couple, three, four, five months. Most diets need half a year to actually show you what their long-term effects are. So if you do actually take it as seriously as you should, diet will be a thing that you will be constantly researching for and through for probably a decade. But I can already tell you right now what you can eliminate from your diet completely. A lot of sugar and artificial sweeteners, anything of that like. Uh, super high processed stuff, fast food, uh, pizzas, unnecessary, stuff like that. As well as high sugar, as well as pretty much any drinks outside of water and maybe milk. Because milk has quite a bit of sugar in it too, and it's not as calcium dense as you think. Instead of drinking a soda with your dinner... Just drink some water. Yeah, I know that tap water isn't like the best because there's other stuff that filters that they currently have in place just can't work around. But f water is good. Water is a very good option to everything else, no matter what ha it has in it. No matter what you're getting your water, what source you're getting your water from, as long as it's not actually contaminated. Um, your sides should always be like bananas, apples, oranges, stuff like that. Bananas and apples are the two main fruits that you're going to want to add. And for vegetables, I'm still kind of working on my vegetables right now. To figure out what I want from them. But we have a lot of green beans. And I've been eating quite a few of them. Very inconsistently. But I've eaten a lot of them. And I know what seasoning I like with it now. Seasoning is also fine. If you want to season your meat. Or you want to season your vegetables. Or something like that. You can go ahead and do that. Seasoning spices have been around for a long time as well. Spices have been around for... Either anywhere from one to three thousand years. So, yeah. I think the reason why milk is just so debatable is just because it's not as calcium dense as people would like you to believe. You can get probably most of your calcium just off of eating fruits and vegetables. You get a lot of your nutrition from eating fruits and vegetables. That's where the vegan mindset comes in. But, you know, meat is also very important. You want to have your protein in there so you can be stronger as well. So, like, the four the four main foods you should eat is meat. You should eat a lot of meat. Chicken, beef, pork, eggs, stuff like that. You should eat a lot of vegetables. Um, like, green beans, broccoli. Uh, I think cauliflower is pretty good as well. Most vegetables, I, the only vegetables, the, and there's a lot of vegetables to choose from. You don't have to think that all vegetables are just bad. A lot of vegetables taste like garbage. I, don't get me wrong. I can't stomach a salad because it just doesn't taste like anything. But, you know, there's plenty of vegetables in there that are completely fine. You need to have a good amount of fruit. Again, bananas and apples are going to be your main two out of that that are going to be like the best. But there are also other fruits that are alright, like uh, watermelon, strawberries. Like if you need to get your, if you really think you need something sweet, you should try and aim for watermelon or strawberries rather than going for candy. <laughs> your snacky thing can be nuts. Just have a little... A little container like a glass jar or something of almonds that you just take some out of and snack on here and there uh, peanuts are also a good option cashews stuff like that and then your drink throughout the entire day 
if you can do this, it should you should try and make it to where it's just water. That's what I'm pretty much doing right now, except for my protein drink, but even then, I'm going to upgrade my protein drink to a flavorless protein to flavor this way once I figure out someone that actually delivers in the U.S. where I can get that for fairly cheap. I do want to research that, but I also don't want to waste it the way that we have currently. So, yeah. This video is not to like tell you that this is super simple. Again, it's there's a lot of different foods in each of these categories, and you do want to figure out what's best for you. Because there's a lot of vitamins and minerals that you very much need. That a lot there there is not a single one of these foods specifically that will give you all of that. You need to figure it out for yourself. You need to go along the road. And figure out what you need the most. I think I've covered every aspect of this that I've wanted to. I probably didn't touch on the whole false health warnings as much as I should have. But... The studies that cholesterol, sodium, and fat are all good for you have been around for a while now. So, I feel like at least a good amount of people should know it by now. And pretty much anyone that's looking to improve their diet a lot should know that by now. If they're watching, like, good things. Another thing that I will tell you to do is that doctors are a very good source. And you shouldn't discredit them immediately. But if your doctor is fat or obese themselves, and they're telling you to do something, you should probably triple check sources that actually prove that. There's, like, if, you, if you're getting your diet advice from a doctor that doesn't look like, that looks like he eats tons of sweets and fast food, you should probably stop listening to him. Just because, why would you talk to someone about this that doesn't know what they're talking about? Like, sure, he may have a medical degree, but that doesn't mean that he knows everything about diet. Because if he knew everything about diet, and he knew how easy it was to have a diet that's just, you know, all natural... And he was like, oh yeah, this, this, and this, it's all that. If he actually knows how to be healthy, he would be healthy. But if he's not, then clearly you shouldn't listen to him. Like if you're, if some 200, 300 pound person is telling you that cholesterol and sodium is bad for you, you just move to another source. And if you actually do have someone that tells you that in real life, show them the, show them the real studies, not the fake garbage studies that they've been fed over the years. Like if, again, it especially helps if you're fit and they're not. Like obviously if you're a fit person and they're not a fit person and you two have different beliefs, then the logical conclusion is that their beliefs are wrong. It's that simple. I get very... I wouldn't say angry, but very upset and disappointed whenever I hear people talk about cholesterol or sodium like it's a bad thing. Like, it, all, I saw... Um, in another friend's house, I saw a thing of sea salt that was low sodium. <sighs> I'm so confused. I was like, what's the point then? What's the point? They, so either it tastes like garbage or they added in a ton of other stuff. Like, think about it. If there is no sugar in your... in the thing that you're eating, 
and it still tastes very sweet, you have to ask yourself, why is it so sweet? You probably think to yourself, it can't be good. So that that is what I'll leave you with today. I don't know why I've been stuttering more in this video than I have in the last one. Oof. It's probably because I'm not super educated on this yet. And I've only watched Fat Chance once. I do want to watch it more. But my TV's kind of broken. <clears throat> so that also means that gaming content that you've been looking forward to is, is completely out of the window. <coughs> yeah. But that also, that triply means that YouTube is going to be something I consume a bit less, hopefully. Because the main way that I would look at YouTube is that I would look at it on the TV because it's a bigger screen, so it's easier to watch. It's a bit louder, so I don't have to turn on captions or anything just to be able to hear it. I've also gotten used to skipping ads on there, so I've gotten a like, world record timing for it now of reporting ads to skip them. But the main, main thing was that YouTube shorts and community posts are almost never shown on the TV. You'll get like one tab for shorts and then that's it. It's not like mobile where every five or ten videos it'll be recommending you a ton of shorts. It's like there's there's one little tab under your recommended that will be a shorts tab. And once you pass that, you're not going to see shorts again until you go back up to the top. It's way better. Not to mention this is just way better for a longer term, like longer length videos. Because you just turn it on and set the TV remote to the side of my phone, I have to hold it. And this is a bit of a tangent, but yeah. It's... It was way more convenient for watching YouTube on, and it was a bit healthier because I wouldn't get distracted as easily because it's less short form content. It doesn't recommend near as much short form unless I watch a lot of short form, which I don't anymore. You probably will know why just based on the fact that I'm a self-improvement guy. And community posts aren't going to be as distracting. There are only a couple YouTubers that I even have that post community posts that I even care about somewhat. The last YouTube account, the previous channel, the one that the previous channel was on, it had a massive problem of me constantly scrolling down and liking community posts because I found them a little bit funny. Because... They had a meme or something that I somewhat related to in one way or another, and I'd like it, and then I'd keep scrolling, and then the next day, there would be two community posts from that same channel that had done that, and of course, I would like at least one of those memes, because if I like their memes from before, I'm going to like them now, and then eventually, my my recommended was just stacked with community posts from people just sharing memes. I was, it was like I was on Reddit. It was insane how many memes would, like picture memes would just pop up on my recommended on YouTube. <sighs> that really gets all of that out of the way. The next video I think actually will be what I brought up a couple weeks ago. I am going to make a video based on teaching you how to not waste your time with, you know, garbage on the internet. I'm going to just teach you the main thing on it and maybe a couple side lessons, but there's going to be one core lesson to take away from it. And that's, that'll be really about it. I think that how to not waste your time on your internet, how to not waste your time on the internet, 
is probably simpler than most of us would like to admit. Because a lot of the internet is very addicting, but there are things out there for... There are ways to control it. And a lot of those ways are very easy, and hopefully mine is. This has been another episode of Self-Improvement. If you found it useful at all, you know, give it a like, subscribe, all that other stuff. I'm only really going to push the whole like and subscribe bit for the first year or two of my channel just so that I can grow up to a point where I'm actually getting viewers. But once I reach a certain point, I will no longer mention it. But for now, it's going to be mentioned because I need to, you know, I need to get up there. You are the only one who can control where you go in life. I want you to remember this for the next week until I come up with a new outro again next week because I'm sure I will. You are the only one that can make you achieve your goals and there's no one else that can stop you either. You and your imagination are the only two things restricting you from being up here. It is just a matter of how far you will go and how far you can imagine yourself being. I mean, look at me. Uh, just a year ago-ish, I was eating garbage like every day. Lil Debbie was something, Lil Debbie and Oreos were something that were constantly being bought because I kept putting them in the cart. And now, I and living a life that I am truly beginning to be happy with and I have only just started get up there for yourself and if you need the extra motivation you can also get up there for in the names of other people but by all means get up there there's nothing that can stop you given that you never give up there's a saying I like that refers to this. A loser is someone who loses once and gives up. A winner is someone who loses a lot until he wins. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.